This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by Squarespace, GoDaddy, and Netflix. So we're talking about Image Comics, right? Image Comics. Image. Where's Spawn? Hey, welcome to iFanboy, the video show from the comic book discussion site, iFanboy.com. I am Josh. I'm here with... Ron. And of course... Do you have a date? Do you want to be like speeding through that? <laughs> it's, that's, I equate I get energy with speed. But you're not, you're not being yeah. and I learned it from him. I learned it from watching you, all right? <laughs> One of the biggest pieces of news in comics in the last six months, at least, was that Robert Kirkman, the writer who we all love, became an image partner. One of the, one of the first new partners. Have we had that guy on the show? I think we have yeah. a couple times. And, and for those who might not know, we're living in Iraq or under a Marvel DC bias. Image Comics is the fourth largest publisher in comics um, behind Marvel DC and Dark Horse. Uh, they were formed in the early 1990s when there was a big exodus of talent from Marvel. It involved Jim Lee and Todd McFarlane and Rob Liefeld and um, Eric Larson. Eric Larson, of course, and Jim Valentino and Will Sportaccio. It's been, what, 15 years? 15 years. 15 years and they are pretty much. You know, Liefeld is back doing Young Blood. Sylvester too. It's Mark Silvestri, right? And and Mark Silvestri's got Top Cow as imprints, and McFarlane's got Spawn. That stuff's still been going, but another kind of image has emerged, and that's something that's got us really excited. And that's that's yeah. that image is that new image is is uh, identified with Robert Kirkman, yeah, and yeah. so they made him a new partner. So we figured this is probably a good time to delve into what image is doing these days because yeah. it's not and what it's it used such to. a wealth of diverse comics. They put out a lot of stuff. And it's just like literally Snacks. the only like the only requirement they have is that they they're good comics. Yeah. You can't identify yeah. one kind what of comic. What type of comics does does Image publish? Paper ones. <laughs> um, it is, it's, a, it's important to probably note that in the 2000s, at least, uh, Jim Valentino was the publisher, and he started bringing in talent like Bendis and David Mack and, and folks like that, and also Robert Kirkman. Um, and then Valentino uh, was replaced by Eric Larson, who kind of continued that, and now the current publisher, Eric Stevenson, is kind of continuing this mandate of, of good comics. Mm. Um, so they put out a lot of stuff. We can't talk about everything. Right. We're going to not talk about probably one of your favorite comics. Um, all right. Why didn't you talk right. about But so that's the disclaimer. We're talking about the ones that are kind of on our radar that we're kind of most interested in. So, so you would think um, Kirkman's the big news. We've talked so much about Kirkman. We've done at least three shows with him. So we're not going to get in depth. He does Walking Dead, which is one of the best books. He does Invincible, which is one of the best books. He also go, looks over Brit, which was a uh, spin-off. Astonishing Wolfman, another yep. one that he's doing. Astounding. The, Astounding. Astounding? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's, it's, well, Astonishing it's, it's easy was, to get yeah. mixed yeah. up. Yeah. I think the main thing about, the, the thing that's getting kind of cool about Kirkman's books is that he's, I don't want to say it, but the Kirkman verse. Why not? The, oh, it's, it's, it's okay. It's a shared universe where all his characters exist in. Right. Yeah. And, and that's something that's yeah. new there. Well, not new, actually. It's no. revisited, I guess. Well, it's, my, a, it's a trope in comics that gets a lot of you your know, idea of image comics is different than mine because of the yeah. time that you which is which is interesting because if you think about it like he's going back to something but the like there's a little universe that's going on there the same with Jay Ferber yep. uh, where there's a little universe going Jay, on Jay Ferber is uh, the writer of Noble Causes and Dynamo 5 and Gemini and, and he's built this little kind of universe amongst his own books that crosses over not only into Kirkman's books but also into Savage Dragon Eric Larson's book well, they all have their um, pockets but they all still yeah. exist within the image and he, as yeah. much as you may not like it, all these image books they, at least the superhero books exist together yeah sort of no so they not, do not all of them those ones the, the, the Savage yeah. Dragon and Invincible yeah. and, and a bunch but, of but it's loose it's not, there it's, isn't a yeah. mandate like Marvel exactly. like where the continuity has to be no 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 there. but they yeah. do all coexist they yeah, do they all cross over yeah kind of like Law and Order which, which, is, which is good for an old fashioned superhero fan like me you know I read Savage Dragon I read Invincible I read Dynamo 5 mm -hmm. and to see those characters interact I get a little giggle out of them and like Noble Causes had a big party scene and Savage Dragon was just in the background dancing he wasn't even he just was there and it's yeah. that it's that idea of the shared universe that, that it's not it's not oh where was you know where was this character at this point in time right. you know it's so. the fun part of it as opposed to the yep. annoying part of it right. you know who you are fire right. breather shows up sometimes you know, yeah exactly cool he's stuff. in that universe yeah. yeah so besides Kirkman and Ferber there's tons of other people working in Image tons of good and yeah. great books one of those guys is Joe Casey who was he came up in Marvel and he's been a Marvel DC guy for so long and then. He's finding his his voice and his home and, and image. You know, Joe was was a superhero guy. Yeah. He, Joe's worked on X Men. X Men. Yeah. Joe's Cable. worked on Superman. He worked on Cable for a long time. Big Iron big Man. flagship. He worked in the books. two biggest books you can work on. Yes. Yeah. Um. And 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 nowadays, 
and I think that he's happy about this, is that he's he's at Image doing tons of books. I mean, we're going to touch on some of them, but like, there's there's so many, it's all it's almost hard to. Um, Godland. Godland is so much fun. I'm I, it's, I just I'm very happy that you. Like yeah, it. no, no, you got me the Godland hardcover, and 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 it, it's I, I kind of dismissed it when it first came out. It's uh, written by Joe Casey, and it's drawn by Tom Scioli. Yep, and it's. When I saw it, I was like, oh, this is a Kirby ripoff. T- 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 it's drawn to look exactly like It's drawn like to look to exactly like Jack Kirby. Kirby dots, crackles, energy, all this kind of mm-hmm. stuff. But it is, and it's a, it's a retro kind of feel of a book. It's a 60s kind of it's feeling. It's a superhero book. It's a superhero, but it's a cosmic superhero book. Yeah. And it's like, and it's out there. It's like 70s yeah. out there. I'm less surprised yeah. that he likes it, more surprised that you like it. Yeah, I, yeah, I did. I enjoyed it. Cause it was, because the thing about it is, it was so fresh. It was it was it was unlike anything else I was reading. And yeah. but and the energy was it, it was the energy on the page. Yep. It was all that sort of excitement about yeah. it. It was a ton of fun. It's life. There's nothing like bursting it. Bursting off now, the page, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, Godland's awesome. It's going into its final year. It's just starting its mm-hmm. final year, which I'll be sad when it leaves. Um, and then another uh, sort of uh, graphic novel, I guess, that yep. they did uh, was Nixon's Pals uh, by with art by Chris Burnham. This one, like, the thing is, the graphic novels will come and go, and you kind of mean to pick them up, and eventually, and every, every once in a while, you read one, and you're like, oh, I really, really dug this, and this was one of those, this is, it's a, uh, I think it's a bail bondsman in Los Angeles. Or no, parole officer. Parole officer, sorry, that's parole right, officer. sorry. There is yeah. a bail bondsman in, yeah. in Los Angeles, and in this Los Angeles, there are supervillains. Yeah. And so he is the parole officer of supervillains, and... And he's a shit life. He's just, like, it's, it's, it's <laughs> like... Like when we the the term hard boiled is overused a lot. <laughs> yeah. This is totally what that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it is it's one story. It's you know it's not the thickest book in the world. It's just a fun, like over the top story that is violent and and dirty and, and, it's, and nasty. It, and, and it's it's got it's got these supervillains with powers, but existing in a very gritty real world. Mm-hmm. But there's also a level of humor yes. to them. You know, like there's the girl with. With the boobs, <laughs> just like, with, yeah. the, just with, the ma- with the mouths for the boobs, and the, uh, the little faces on her boobs, Each and boob has a personality. Yeah, and, and it's, just, yeah, it's, just... it's it's a fun sort of wacky book, but at the same time, like like the, the character is really serious and yeah. not ironic. But some of the stuff around it, I just had a ton of fun reading this book. And I, and and the thing is, from looking at the cover or hearing the title, I have no idea what it is. Yeah, like I I had no so. I, w- I was really impressed by Chris Burnham's art. I thought yep. it was. I thought it was. It was really. It, it was really well done. It really captured the tone and the action mm-hmm. of the book. You know, and and they said that if it sells well and does well, they'll do more yeah. with this character, which I think was really. I, I liked it. I like. It was. It like, has nothing to do with Richard yeah. M. Nixon. No, no, nothing at all. And that's. I think that's important to get across. <laughs> um, I was looking for Ehrlichman. I was like, where is he in this book? <laughs> <laughs> but um. But yeah, so he does Nixon Pals, and, and Joe Casey also is doing Charlton's Ball, which is like a ma- magic, if magic existed in the real world kind of mm-hmm. thing. Um, it just a uh, few issues have been out. Um, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's wacky. Joe, Joe's got big ideas. Joe's part yeah. of the Man of Action team, which is yeah. a collective of a couple of guys, right? Steve yeah. T. Siegel, and Duncan Rulo, and Joe and Kelly. Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly, who's got um, a uh, series that just started coming out this past summer. It's on issue um, uh, three. issue three and four is coming out. Um, but written by uh, Joe Kelly, drawn by J.M. Ken Nomura. It's called I Kill Giants. And um, this one really jumped out to me when it first came out because I thought the cover treatments were just done in a, in a beautiful kind of very you know kind of interesting kind of way that looked different than anything out there. And it's a it's a cute it's a it's it starts off what you think is a cute story. It's a, a oh, this little girl, little and... girl, and she she's kind of you know she's in school and, and she, nobody really gets her because she claims that she kills giants. <laughs> and you begin to realize that there's this world around her that that's somewhat fantastic. This the world where giants exist, and she has to kill them, and there are fairies and things like that. But at the same time, she's got a bully at school, and she's got to deal with her teachers asking why you're head in the clouds and all that kind of stuff. And it's and the J M Ken Nomura's art is like it actually reminds me of Alex Robinson's um, art. It's that very kind of you know that kind of oh, yeah. that kind of Cartoon. you know cartoony, but it's very sketchy, yeah. a little er- erratic. But what I think is great about it is that somehow he is capturing a lot of the emotion mm-hmm. with with I these think scenarios. Is really good at yeah, and and it, it just really has has. has there's just, there's some big beautiful panels in it. Yep. It's just great cartooning and it. it's fantastic. Yeah. It looks beautiful. Yeah, so. it's gonna be a seven issue series, and you know it's gonna be collecting trade paperback. Mm-hmm. This is one that I think is gonna go down as being one of the big hits of this year, hopefully, because I, I really really cool. like. Yeah, it. Yeah, he's got a new book, Four Eyes, which is about dragons. Yeah. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And it made me think of Rain of Fire immediately. <laughs> nice. Yes. So the two Joes, Joe Kelly and Joe Casey, are putting out some good work. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great little pocket portion yeah. of it. And then when we come back from our break, we're going to talk about some more guys putting out some more great work. 
iFanboy would like to thank Squarespace.com for sponsoring this episode. If you ever wanted to build a complex high-end website but you don't know a thing about coding, Squarespace has the tools for you. You can build websites with high-end functionality and all sorts of complex stuff on them using their tools. Whether you have a large powerful business or you just want to build a real nice blog, Squarespace has got what you need. They give everyone the opportunity to build pages that are just as powerful and flexible as those of the big dog. Keep an eye out for some pages that Squarespace is going to be building for us. The thing about images, stuff will come out that you're not expecting. I mean, if you're... It'll, it'll sneak up on you. Well, Marvel and DC, you mostly know what you're going to get. Yeah. Uh, Dark Horse is going to be Hell, Hellboy, BPRD, that kind of thing. Sometimes they'll surprise you. Um, That's all you read at Dark Horse and say. <laughs> they put out a lot more. <laughs> I read Furious, my friend. <laughs> True, but anyway. I read lots of stuff. Star um, Wars. Yeah. I don't read Star Wars. <laughs> uh, Proof by Alexander Gretchen and Riley Rosmo is a book that came out in the last year or so. Yeah, within the past year. Um, a book I was not at all interested in or knew anything about when it came out. Now, I heard about it. See, the thing is, because image one of the one of the problems with images, like you said, they put out so much stuff, so sometimes it's hard to figure out what is the good stuff or not. Yes, and so, very so, much so. So sometimes you need to take a chance on something, sometimes you wait to hear what somebody thinks. When proof was originally solicited, I heard the word cryptozoology. Right. And that, went, hmm. But it wasn't enough for me to get it. See, Luckily I, I enough, heard that fr- too when you said it. Yeah. And it didn't really interest me. Oh, you were yeah, with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the kind of thing that gets our ears up. Yeah. But but for whatever reason, I didn't pick it up. And then it took a, a mutual friend of ours who read the first couple issues and, and said, this is really good. And I went back and got it. I was like, oh, crap, this is good. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and at that point, I was interested, but I thought I'll wait until the trade comes out. Yeah. I picked that up. And I love this book. Well, you're lucky because one of the things Image is doing that's very smart yep. is that they're taking their first trades mm-hmm. and it's $10. Yep. So smart. And it's, you yeah. can, it's not a huge commitment. D- Dynamo 5 was nine ninety nine for the first seven issues. Yeah. Like they're pa- they're thick trades yeah. for nine ninety nine. A couple of books yeah. we're gonna talk about later. Yeah. It's really smart to get people to try. I mean, this is what hooked Josh. Is be able to yeah. get a ten dollar ten dollar book. This is a fantastic comic. Yeah. This is one of our favorite finds of the year. All I think. three of us, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. I read it in issues, and it that's reads right. just as well. I'm in actually issues. on yeah. issues now. Yeah. It's it's really fun in issues. The the cool thing about this book is that it doesn't look like any other book going no. on. Riley. No. Riley's art is awesome. Riley it, it's awesome, yeah. and then also. The cryptozoology is nice and whatever, but there is a technique to this book and a feel that it has a plan yeah. and, and a feel that it's not slapped together at all. Like all of these different characters have personalities and they're all separate. Just step back, stepping back, it's, it's proof is a story of a government agency that's secret and they investigate cryptozoology, which is the urban sort of legends of Bigfoot and Chupacabra, Chupacabra and, and the and New Jersey Devil and, and the fairies. fairies. And, and and one of the agents is a Bigfoot, and his name is Proof, John Proof Rock, and they call him Proof, and he's the main character of the story. Mm-hmm. So you've got the you know secret agent Bigfoot who wears a yep. suit, and he's a Bigfoot, and he. And if you kind of if that's something that sounds good to you, and, he's been and how does it not? Time. And so so the book opens up with a new agent being brought into the. The into the mix, yeah, the, of yeah, the initiate, yeah, is she gonna make it type thing, and 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 get thrown into this into the, this first story in volume, volume one, Goat Sucker, which is um, Chupacabra, which is a Chupacabra story, which gets a little harrowing, it gets a little, it gets yeah. a little rough. Well, and, that's the great thing about Proof is that it's fun, rollicking adventure, yep. and then you get to terrifying just bits of horror. Mm-hmm. Yep. And what's really cool, what I like about it is these little little cryptoid boxes with um, with well researched information. Um, Alexander has done a lot of legwork in looking into these urban myths and legends and like and. So whenever they show a character, they show the fairies, and it's like fairies th- were thought to believe in 1835, and, and like this sort of thing. Yeah, which I loved. I love the the the. Which are freaky. Have you seen those photographs? Yeah. Are- yeah. The 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 thing about those the thing about those is they could be really irritating used poorly. But right. And here they're used really really well. Another yep. thing they're used for sometimes is to act as the omniscient um, voice yep. of the narrator, and it sometimes tells you stuff you need to know about the characters. The other things, yep. not unlike it gets done in a lot of in uh, fables books. Jack of Fables does that. Yeah. Uh, I'm just I'm I'm in love with this book. Yeah, this when book it comes is great. Out, I get excited every time. Seriously, get the first trade. It's one of those comics that are really special and really ten dollars. Like, yeah, so Smart good, so so image. good. Um, another uh, up and coming uh, writer artist that's come out of Image, which is, oh. is probably poised to be a big big name in the future, is, John- I see that. Yeah. is Jonathan Hickman. Uh, Jonathan Hickman uh, was it oh six or oh seven? Oh seven came out with the book, his first book, The Nightly News, mm-hmm. um, and since then seems to have. Uh, unleashed a whole like he's host more so many projects so many ideas and now he's actually been um, he's got now working for Marvel he's working with Bendis on the Secret Warriors the Nick Fury book um, yeah. and which I don't even know what to which, expect which by the way a book that 
literally, if you didn't put those guys on, I wouldn't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> I, w- no. I wouldn't. I no. don't care. But no. the fact that Jonathan Hickman and Bendis are on it makes me want to check it out. Now, what makes Jonathan Hickman so different is that he wrote and drew the nightly news. But to say drew is an understatement. Yeah. He's approaching comics in a way that nobody else is. And it's the kind of thing that I give to people to you know, kind of make to buck their idea of what comics mm-hmm. are. He um, wor- worked for years in graphic design, and the book is, while he's drawn it, he's also designed it. And it has such a modern, different look than it looks like no other comic book you'll read. Then, as his other books have come out, um, he's, you know, his most recent book that he's writing and drawing is Pax Romana, um, which, he's, which has a similar look and feel to Nightly News, but still is a little different. But he's writing Red Mask for Mars, and a different artist is on it, but he's coloring it and he's doing some design bits. Mm-hmm. Um, he wrote Transhuman with a different artist, but you could tell his influence. Like, he, there are some creators who just write the script and hand it off. He is involved in yep. every aspect of it. Thing. Now, unfortunately, that leads to late books yeah, these and might, things these like that. might be better in trade. Yeah. But there is not a thing that he's put out through Image so far that I haven't been like, wow, this is... Even if I didn't love it, yeah. I was incredibly impressed by it and wanted to see more of it. Yeah. The, um, Pax Romano is my favorite thing that he's done by far. Uh, Nightly News, difficult to explain what it is. You it's, see? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a... It's a um, an, an attempt to overthrow the, uh, the media control of the, the, the world. Of the world. Yeah. Um, and, and the political aspect of it. And there's so, a cult. A they cult uses, uses violence to take yeah. off the media. And, yeah. But it's a comment on society. It's, it's, it's a big... F- to the, to the here's media. Here's the thing about Jonathan Hickman. I'll be completely honest. You're going to want to spend some time with it. <laughs> yes. It's, yeah. not, it's not like you can't read it while you're doing something It's else. not lowbrow. But it's worth it. Yeah. It's absolutely worth it. And a lot of times you'll see stuff that's supposed to be highbrow and you don't understand it and that's because it's actually not very good. Yeah. Um, this is not bad. It's it's really good and it's yeah. surprising. Sort of oh, it, it's challenging. I mean, like I don't think I'm smart enough to read his stuff. I mean, like, <laughs> like, like, like I need to set aside like a half an hour to read like an issue, you uh-huh. know. And like, uh-huh. but when and when after I'm done with it, I it's just it, it stops and makes you think, and that's yeah, what's really interesting. Transhuman is like a documentary on yeah. what if a, a corporation Cloning. created superpowers, genetic engineering, yeah. Yeah. genetic engineering, and and it's kind of fun. Like they're kind of like we're making it sound like it's very serious. They're he's funny. funny. He's funny. funny. Yeah, there's, no, there's humor good, yeah. in yeah. them. And, and there's actually like the you know, little cryptoid things. There's little comments uh, yeah. from the author. It's footnotes all through us. Yeah. Nightly news, um, yeah. It's just, it's a hell of a meal and it's, it's worth the price. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So Hickman's definitely. And watch for him. Yeah. You're going to hear his name a lot more. Yes. So. Another guy, B. Clay Moore, he's got a whole little retro 50s action going on in Image, which mm-hmm. is totally different from everything we've been talking about. I mean, everything yeah. here is different. So, yeah, nothing is, this is. It's very hard to plan a show around nothing being <laughs> related. It's like Seinfeld. <laughs> Hawaiian Dick, which yeah. is his whole 50s Hawaii PI story. I mean, it's yeah. noir, but it's also a little bit, you know, um, this, this first volume had a little bit of magic in it. A little bit of mysticism. Mysticism, yeah. Which, is, yeah. which is not what I was expecting reading it, but, I mean, this is all, totally unique. Yeah. Beautifully drawn, just the cur- the current series that's currently in issues right now um, has got a, a um, has got a great art team on it, and I know Scott Chandler. Scott Chandler st- with, with colors by uh, Stephen Griffin, who's the original artist. Right, and the co- the coloring, the Scott Chandler's art with with Griffin's coloring makes that book it, it carries through the retro feel and is again unlike any book that's out there, you know, in a visual sense. I mean, if you, like, just just talking about it now. All these books, which look completely different from one another, they're all incredibly unique. Like, they're yep. these artists with voices. Yep. And not voice, but you know, there's just yeah. a style that, that is unmistakable from that. And I love seeing that because it is the stuff that, while you, you don't initially get this stuff at, at Marvel and DC, this is the, these are the guys who will be working for them eventually. Yeah. And these are the, these are, they're starting the not. trends. Yeah. But Honestly. I mean, but it happens that well, way. Yeah, but, but I know, well, yeah. that, yeah. and maybe some of those rough edges will get rounded off and whatever. Yeah. But but no, these are. I mean, and, and it, what's interesting is that Image started with this great talent that came from Marvel right. and DC, and now they're building and cultivating the talent. You know, yeah. and, and you know, hopefully, like kind of said, some, some of them stay and continue to do great work. But you know, like somebody like Hickman's gonna get gigs at Marvel, and we'll see how that goes. And either goes poorly and he comes back to Image, or you know, or a lot of them try to do both. I want to see do both. Yeah, exactly. I think that's great because so. it works out for everybody that yeah. way, except for Kirkman. He's not so into that. We're yeah. gonna move on. <laughs> but he did it. He played in there. So. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. So after the break, uh, we got a couple more books uh, that are. More books. More books. Good Lord. GoDaddy.com. Thanks for sponsoring this episode. Web hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99.9% uptime, 24 7 support, and free access to Hosting Connection, the place to install over 30 free applications, sir, to help you get the most from your hosting plan and website. If you want to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has what you need. Dot com names as low as $1.99. 
world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. Looking to drive viewers to your video content? Then get a .tv domain name and stand out from the crowd. TV domains are perfect for podcasters, video bloggers, or anyone with something to say. And they're available now at GoDaddy.com. And let us not forget Netflix for the movie lover in your heart. With over 90,000 titles, fast free shipping, and a wonderful queue system, Netflix is the place that you want to be for DVDs. If you'd like to get a free two-week trial, go to www.netflix.com slash iFanboy and sign yourself up today. Uh, in the past year, uh, Image made a book specifically for Ron. <laughs> <laughs> almost, no, almost, almost, almost they there. They pulled him into thinking they made a book specifically like two, for Ron. It was like two thirds of the way there. And, they, and, they, and then they expanded we, his horizon. We've talked about it a lot before. We talked about it on our on our music show, um, and I've talked, done a mini on it and stuff like that. A book called Phonogram, uh, written by Kieran Gillen, drawn by Jamie McKelvey, and um, you know, focusing on the world of Britpop and the art of Jamie McKelvey, who I who is my, probably one of my top five favorite artists yeah. right now. And um, focused on you know music and magic and that whole kind of world. Um, it's in trade right now. Definitely want to check it out. But but what's even more interesting is coming in this December, uh, Phonogram Two, the Singles Club is coming out, which I think they've ditched the magic angle, and it's uh, it's it's a six issue series that takes place on the same night in New York from different point of views per each issue and mm-hmm. with a so- with a song for each each issue. That um, might be a book made right. From it might history. be. It's getting inching ever closer. <laughs> I, I saw some pages from it. Um, it's colored. Where the second series is colored, where um, the first uh, the first series is black and white. Uh, Jamie McKelvey's art colored is fantastic, and we got a taste of that with his own written and drawn creator own book, Suburban Glamour, which he wrote and drew. It was a four issue miniseries. Um, more of the fairies and, and mad magic-y kind of stuff, <laughs> but I love his art. And uh, I want to know how much it would cost him to, write, to draw my life. I yeah, still exactly. Know. Yeah, exactly. I still He'll know. probably do it too. Um, but yeah, so suburban. Glamour, I have really hot girlfriends. Suburban glamour was a great kind of flight of fancy, and kind of a girl finds out she's actually a fairy and all this kind of deal. And but a lot and, of yeah. just really elf. Princess. Yeah, nah. <laughs> a lot of teen, a lot of really really true teen stuff. Yeah, yeah. very yeah, very, and I just love the the look of it all. So the work of uh, Jay McKelvey That's and, a gorgeous and cover, by the way. Yeah, Oh, yeah, they were great design. Also, nine nine dollars. Yeah, or ten dollars. And the, the the covers of Phonogram, both the first series and the upcoming second series, are again distinct. Look like nothing else. Kind of like I Kill Giants. They're playing with the design, that sort of thing. But um, but it's funny because Phonogram plays into this concept of music. And we talked, we did a whole show about a year ago about music and comics and stuff like that. And Oni Press is a publisher that does a lot of music. Image also likes music a lot. Um, we had talked about in, in our music show that they put out a book of uh, an anthology of books based on Bell and Sebastian stories, put the book back on the shelf. Um, it's, we talked about that's a great concept. They should do it with other artists. Right, yep. Well, they have. <laughs> and what we got was <laughs> was comic book tattoo, which is the uh, an anthology. Like, I, like mine? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> which is an, an anthology of stories uh, b- influenced or based on Tori Amos songs. Um, this is kind. This should be kind of a big deal, <laughs> um, because for a couple of reasons, um, it's great crossover. Mm-hmm. Um, Tori Amos fans. I don't know if you are a Tori Amos fan. You know any Tori Amos fans? There's some of the the diehard kind of fans. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Yeah, they'll buy this site unseen just because it's Tori. Mm-hmm. They'll they'll freak out about it. Um, Strange, I don't see her. Anywhere. I know. Yeah, that was, okay. yeah. Well, there's a little wrap around when it comes to this story. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But this has got it's got um, work of you know David Mack, Jonathan Hickman's in here, um, uh, C.B. Sabolsky. So so Sabolsky. There's so many names. Um, Ted McKeever, Hope Larson. Yep. You know, so so many names. And what's what I find really interesting by this was um, the if you look at the format. It's like not normal comic size, and so what happens is that we get these it's not normal anything. Not normal size. anything. We get these huge, beautiful pages that are a different kind of aspect ratio, and it's the same kind of theme as uh, the Bell's Bastion book, where some of the stories don't feature any lyrics; they're just inspired. Mm-hmm. Some of the stories feature lyrics. Some of the stories are a, 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 adaptation. An adaptation. Some of them are, are telling the exact story of it. Some of them are just influenced by it. Um, you know, but but each one is individual, and each one is just is. So much fun, and it's so thick you can just sit down and get lost in it over it, months. It's you know? it's a gorgeous book. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that comes across as you're looking at it, but like the pages are twice as big as a normal page, yeah. and they're just great heavy paper. And like I like I don't care about Tori Amos songs, but I was I'm impressed as hell by this book. Yeah, um, it's just it's just a nice nice package. Yeah, and um, and and the one the one criticism I have is that the trade paperback version a little hard to read. You got to put it on a table. You got to turn the pages. The hardcover version, though, if you have the money, is beautiful. But even then, this is mo- the price on the it's like thirty dollars. Twenty nine ninety nine for this, for this like it's this thick. 
There's a ton of stories. That in is there. a really good deal. And yeah. you know what's actually it's really good for is that there are a lot of indie artists name that you've probably heard over time. Yeah. It's a really good way to sample some of that stuff and see who you, who it is you like. So yeah. like the flight books or something like that. There'll be some things that you recognize in there. Yeah. Ryan Kelly did local. Yeah, Ryan Kelly's story in there is There's awesome. A ton of, really I mean, good. like you yeah. could literally be reading. Jock. It. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. An introduction by Neil Gaiman. I know, and, a, like, and an afterword like, by Torian. It's like, funny because like this is yeah. conceptually not not a book I'd be interested in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like he said, I'm, I don't really. Yeah. Tori, Tori Amos doesn't really do anything for me. But when I saw this book, Josh had it on his coffee table. Perfectly enough, it's a coffee table book. Yes. I was like, holy shit, I need that book. It's yeah. just it's yeah. beautiful. Put together yeah. by uh, by Rance Hosley, who is yeah. the guy who introduced Tori Amos and Neil Gaiman. Yeah. Uh, it worked an really also. worked really hard on it, and it just it's it's so great to see a gr a huge project like this come together and come out and just be. <laughs> You know, could be really good for Image as a as an imprint, and you know, who knows? Maybe you know, a Radiohead book. I could see that. That would be. Awesome. I could see you know, like you could see other you know other bands totally <laughs> jumping into awesome. that. You know, you know a lot Jimmy of bands Earl are book. in the comics. Yeah. You yeah. think you think they they should what they should do is they should get to those bands who you yeah. know they like comics. Say hey, want to do a book? Yeah, totally. I'm sure they are. So and I'd be like yes. So this is just a <laughs> <laughs> they would ask me, and I would totally be like yes. yes. Where's the I fanboy book? <laughs> anthology? Yeah. So, just um, <laughs> transcripts of the shows. <laughs> so these are just a People cross section of some of the books at Image that we're digging. Um, there are so many more books. So many more, and you're gonna tell us the ones we missed. It's not a three-hour show. Um, including including <laughs> ones like from Top Cow, like Firstborn, um, by Ron Morris, <laughs> um, which you read, right? Or, I did actually. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> we're not quite done. No, we're not. It appears. I uh, I actually wanted to mention this just because. Out of all the books that are a throwback to what Image used to be, and, mm. and a lot of times you hear the words "top cow," and, yep. and you and a lot of uh, you think people boobies. like us will just go, "Nah," yeah. you know. This they got good people to work on it. They got Ron Mars, um, and then it, Phil Hester, I think, is doing. He's doing the darkness. The darkness now, yep. and this is sort of a a rebooting of sorts uh, of Witchblade and the darkness and the Magdalene. I don't. Yeah. I never read any of that stuff because yeah. I'm I'm not reading that. This is not bad. Cool. Uh, the art is several different artists in this. Um, Stefan Sedgik or Step I can't say that name yeah. uh, is sort of the main artist in, in the whole thing, and it crosses over through a bunch of different titles. But I was actually sort of pleasantly surprised by this. Uh, yeah. The Witchblade is not a, a terribly stupid character when you read it. You know, right. if you actually give it a shot. If you were ever curious about this stuff and didn't want to go back into all of it, this, this book, Firstborn, is actually a really good place to. You know, wet your whistle, and this is the direction that stuff is going in right now. Cool. So. Sounds so, like Top Cow might be worth investigating. They, they are. They're, 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 the pilot season stuff they do, the kind of first mm -hmm. things have been, the, the last batch have been great. Jonathan Hickman had a book, and Jay Ferber had a book, and a bunch of other people. It's been really, it's, yeah. it's been interesting. So, cool. So, tell us what we missed. Email us at contact at ifanboy.com. Do we have anything else under here we missed? No, no, there's nothing else. <laughs> I got a magazine. My laptop. Uh, and you can leave us a voicemail, 888-FANBOYS, which is 326-2697. You can tell us about your favorite image books or what you like from that company, what you want to see doing. Or get thyself to ifanboy.com where you can comment on this show or anything else. What's he looking at? I'm just looking at, no. There, there, are, there aren't boobies in it. Not really. We weren't looking at <laughs> boobies. Why do you assume we're always looking at boobies? I'll go to Tori Amos for boobies. <laughs> um, yeah. So ifanboy.com. Ifanboy.com. You comment on those. So get over to version3.com slash ifanboy for many of the other videos that we have done and all the other fine programming. A lot of sexy time in Tori Amos songs. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's reclaiming her sexuality. Yeah. I feel like a patriarchal we're, society. Or 12. I'm say boobies. <laughs> boobies. Yeah. That's true. God, that's a really nice art. Yeah, it is. TV. It's over there. <laughs> Are you tucked in? I'm all tucked in. You tuck. I'm gonna flip the LCD over and keep it there. 44 seconds into the shoot. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah.